Go to eighth. This is such a cool topic because, well, not cool. It's something that we have to deal with. The parents know all too well they can be awkward for kids and most will protest getting them, but braces might save your kids some issues down the line. Certainly, it's uh, something that we have to deal with as parents, but when should your kid get them? The problem solvers here looking into that issue today. We've got Dr. Cliff Speaks. He's a uh, orthodontist here in Denver to give us some 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 talking points here, some stuff to talk about. Good morning, first of all. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So the kids are going to say no. I don't want it because you know the, they're going to be embarrassed oftentimes to have them. How do you navigate that? So uh, a lot of the times, actually, uh, kids are actually really excited about really? it. Really? Yes. Uh, it's more the adults who are you know who need the <laughs> treatment who are not so excited about it. And once the kids get into high school. You know, they're not so excited about yeah. it. However, the younger kids are actually really excited about it. They want the shiny stuff on their teeth or they want the appliance in their mouth. Should this um, be started, do you think, oftentimes before high school? Absolutely. Um, compliance issues start to happen once the child reach, reaches, you know, ninth and 10th grade. They don't want it. So right. the kids who want it actually uh, take it much more seriously. If you wait too long, is that a problem? So um, the American Association of Orthodontics rec recommends an evaluation by age 17, or sorry, by age seven. Seven, okay. Um, wow. And that is to evaluate uh, the child's growth and development. Um, every child develops differently. Yeah. And so finding that part of their growth curve to actually treat them is important because every, every, every child is unique. Well, the nice thing, too, is that there are a lot more options now than there used to be, and you kind of have some of the options here. Do you want to start down here? These are basic braces, right? Yeah, so... These are pretty much the same. There's, there's nothing really different from them other than one's a little bit more of a cosmetic version of the other. Okay. Um, most adults who want traditional braces want to have something that's a little bit more cosmetic. Is this, um, the, more, is this the cheapest option in terms of money? Not necessarily. In my office, I offer them all pretty much at the same price. Okay. Now, when you start to factor in insurance and what insurance pays, yeah. that's when things get a little bit, a little bit different and, and the different fees what is uh, this? take into account. So this is kind of the modern day headgear. Instead of things wrapping around the neck and the, you know, everybody knows what headgear is. Because those were cool. Is. Yeah. Those were, those were really cool. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, something that corrects uh, bite issues first. Oh. And so people are much more likely to wear their rubber bands at the beginning of treatment as opposed to later in treatment because yeah. they've, they've kind of gotten burnt out. So we address those issues pretty much right from the start. Well, and the headgear, I mean... You you wear that, you look like you're a robot, whereas this, I mean, you almost don't even know that you're wearing it because it's in the back of the mouth. Exactly. So, um, and then once you've corrected the bite issues, you transition over to one of the uh, other options, such as traditional braces and uh, the Invisalign or the Invisalign liners. So Invisalign, it's like a graduated process. You switch these, uh, these liners out uh, from month to month or, or, or something like that. Exactly. And can, can all people use this or is this only in certain situations? So in my office, if, if my patient wants Invisalign, they get Invisalign. Um, I am very, very comfortable with that treatment protocol. Um, it's, it's, I always equate it to, you know, I play the guitar. And if you gave me Jimi Hendrix guitar, yeah. I wouldn't be able to play like Jimi Hendrix. Right. Um, so <laughs> I have had a lot of practice with this, and I use it a lot. Sure. It's a compliance-driven uh, treatment protocol. Just braces are compliance driven too, like with the rubber bands and such, but these have to be on your teeth. Yeah. They have to be pushing compliance your teeth Compliance meaning you have to use it. Exactly. In order for it to actually work. We got to run. I love this topic because again, every, almost every parent has to deal with it. In terms of cost, how do you manage the fact that most of us can't afford to pay for these things? Well, we make it affordable in our practice. Um, we do financing options yeah. uh, over the term of your, your treatment. Sometimes we'll extend financing past treatment times. No interest charges. Um, we you want to make it work. Exactly. And we most orthodontists offer some sort of option, right? Yeah. 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 Most orthodontists do that. Um, we, we try to be very flexible for our patients. Dr. Speaks, it's very nice so to meet much. you. Yeah, we appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for having Thank me. you for bringing kind of some of the props here so we can see the options. Absolutely. Let's get over to meteorologist Jessica LaValle. She is watching.